think Matira was like your everyday a low working class person. He just wanted to get by just like everybody else. But at night he turned into something else. Something you would see in the mind of a deranged crime or horror writer. In 2008, everything unraveled for Godfrey. Two women who he had held captive, Esther Akina, as well as Naomi Wajaro, escaped and they were rescued. They couldn't even speak about the stuff that he had done to them. When they could finally actually talk, they claimed that they were kidnapped by a stranger. They were raped and their blood was drained as they watched. This is something you see in a vampire movie, not in real life. After investigating, the police finally made an arrest and their main suspect was Godfrey Matira. He was 26 years of age at that time. They decided they would go to his house and investigate more. That was when they stumbled upon a shallow grave of a woman. She had body parts missing. Matira reportedly told the detectives that he did all this through the instructions of Bishop Jeremiah Parangwa. He drank the blood of his victims as well as sold the body parts of those victims to various religious cults. Bishop Jeremiah Parangwa was arrested and all he could say was that people were after him. Detectives asked how Godfrey actually drank the blood of his victims. He recalled the time when he was with these two women that had escaped. He had actually drawn their blood and placed it in a mug. But during this time, he had come to a realization that he no longer wanted to be part of this cult, this killing spree. But he had no choice. He had to continue. So he went on to say that with the other victims, he would actually draw their blood and put it in little bottles and then deliver it to the bishop at around 7 p.m. or midnight. According to him, the bishop approached a group of boys who at that time were living on the streets. He was a part of those boys. The bishop promised them jobs and him in particular, the bishop stated that he should come and live with him. That is when, as time went on, he assigned him the role of killing. The first task he undertook was to kill and deliver blood, female breasts, as well as the penises of every man he killed. At this time, Godfrey was killing more men than women. Godfrey's first victim was killed under his bed. As time went on, he began to actually kill these people, chop their bodies and throw them in the lake. He particularly liked to keep the female hands and actually feast on them. But this became boring for him, so he decided that once he killed his victims, he would actually hang them up in his hut like they do in a butchery. And in fact, he no longer ate meat from the butchery, he began to feast on these people. In 2011, the Kenyan government found Godfrey Matira guilty of kidnapping, but the police couldn't provide enough evidence for the charge of a rape of the two women that had escaped. Now, my question becomes, what happened to the case of the woman who was exhumed on his property? Doesn't that woman deserve justice? Where is he now? Well, he's out of prison and like many serial killers, he states that he is reformed and asks for forgiveness. But can we really forgive a man that took so many people's lives? Can we really forgive a man who didn't really feel the wrath of the law?